Hey y'all, Mythic Rare here, and thank you to all my A1D1 subscribers. I just love how the number keeps getting bigger and bigger. So, uh, this is a canvas from UniMade. It is Winston's prize from the artist Cute But Weird. I'm doing this to participate in the Mermaids and Magic 2024 event hosted by Crafting with Shay. And as you can see, I haven't made that much progress on the canvas from the last time. That's because um, I've had a few things come up and I wasn't able to diamond paint quite as much. So if you are sensitive to allergies, medical topics, uh, you maybe want to click off of this video. Maybe check out one of my dopamine unboxing packages um, or like check out one of my other weapon chats because this may not be for you. Just trying to give you a opportunity before uh, I hop right in. So, um, last we left off on Friday, I had gone to my doctor to, or actually Thursday, I had actually gone to the doctor. We got prednisone. We got an antibiotic to help with the swelling in my face and to stop all the fluid from backing up into my ears and giving me a ear infection. And Friday, everything was good. I was taking phone calls and stuff just fine. Um, Saturday was kind of like, I have no idea what happened with my Saturday, y'all. I think I just um, spent the day getting groceries and just like lazing about at home, not really doing a whole lot for obvious reasons. Um, Sunday, um, I it was kind of like a day of mourning for us because I was transitioning from the 10, 15 a.m. to 6, 45 p.m. shift over to the 1, 30 p.m. to 10 p.m. shift. And that is like a very big swing in hours. I basically went from or had gone from eating three meals a day, spending time with family and stuff, and like you know, while I get the time to be with family and be social for events and things, I was boohooing about, like, the lack of time to record. And now it's going to be like, I have, barring allergy problems, um, a lot of time to record now, but then I don't get to see family because I'm, like, getting out so late. Um... So Sunday was kind of like the one last day that Alex and I could spend together. And he's like, well, that, well, you're feeling better. The weather is nice. Like, we should just really leverage the fact that you're feeling good. And it was relatively impromptu, but we decided to make a stop in at Andy B's and do an arcade run. I wanted to play the Willy Wonka game because I didn't get to play that last time and I wanted to see what other things that they had for prizes and we made our trip up there. We saw like, okay, this is what they have in the prize redemption area. The PS5 is always going to be that big ticket item in the glass case. And then, like, there were all of these other things. And we decide from there we're going to stay and play a while. I put my card into the machine that has, like, the ginormous crane with ginormous spiky balls. And I try that a few times. And for whatever reason, I could not get my angle right with the crane or something. I just was not able to pull a spiky ball with the crane. So I just, like, get frustrated, and I'm watching Alex for a while. He's uh, really going at the punching bag game. 
And for those who maybe don't know, it's one of those machines where you have a punching bag and you have to hit it just right so that the number that you earn from the punch matches the high score or the other number that the person previous got. And these numbers were in the 500s. Alex is like really slugging it and he gets up into the 700s. All right. So he's like, okay, now that it's like up this high, I can punch with full force. Um, he decides to do that and the numbers just keep getting higher and higher and like five, six swipes in, he basically figures WTF. I'm like, I either am pulling it or I'm like just going full on. I cannot get it. And I'm just like, I don't think that it's ready to pay. <laughs> and kind of right about that moment, we just hear an incessant amount of screaming and yelling and we see the entire game floor just get like flooded with kids age ranges of five years old all the way up to 12 years old a whole bunch of shrieking and screaming if you are a parent like it like hurts your ears it's that kind it's really shrill it's really loud So I was playing Willy Wonka at the time and I got essentially pulled away from it because all the little kids were right there and we just, Alex had to find a quieter spot on the game floor in order to be able to stay because he's like, if I can't find a quiet spot, I want to leave and I'm just like, but I want to stay and I want to play. So we played the Rick and Morty coin pusher for a little while. It was giving us a decent amount of tickets, but um, I really wanted to go back to Willy Wonka because we were getting all the cards. And I kept on seeing the thing for the golden ticket pop up, but I was never like getting it. And it would come up for every 25 to 30 swipes, or not swipes, coins that I would fire off into the coin pusher. So Alex is just like, blah, 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 these kids, I like, they're so loud. And I'm just like, Alex, think about it. We're at the arcade where your money really and truly goes and has the most bang for your buck. Their parents, since there's a whole bunch of them, their parents probably only gave them $25 to $50 on each of their cards. And they're not going to necessarily have all the skills to, like, farm tickets and things the way that us adults do. Like, just give them 30 minutes or so, they'll blow through their money and they'll be done. <laughs> and that's pretty much... Um, what we did is we just like sat and played games on a quieter spot of the game floor. We just like, we let them have their fun and stuff. And then we went back to our games and then we started playing. Um, Alex got a whole bunch of tickets out of Willy Wonka and so did I, but I never got a golden ticket. And I don't know if maybe just like it's Willy Wonka, I should expect to need a golden ticket in order to get the 5,000 ticket bonus for this coin pusher. But, you know, like I collected all the cards and this is why I'm thinking I overlooked it because I went to the card exchange and I put my all of my Willy Wonka character cards into the thing and it says, oh, you're only getting 400 because you do not have a golden ticket. So I was just like, 
well, dang, now I know what I need to do. And now I'm going to be a little bit more strategic and not play Willy Wonka unless we see that there is a golden ticket actually out about floating around in the machine. Kind of like how if you've ever ran into the Spongebob coin pusher at main event or at Dave and Buster's, your rare card is going to be Gary and basically you are just going to be feeding that machine until you get a Gary to pop out like actually into the chute so that you can obtain. But it was a decent run though. We certainly had fun. Um, after I kind of figured that out with Willy Wonka, I'm just like, well, I still have like $64 left on my card out of the 105 that I started with. So um, like, let's just have some fun. Cause at this point, I kind of don't care. <laughs> We went and we did some other crane games. Alex got like two little dolphins outside of one of them. And well, he won two dolphins, I should say. And we saw this one crane game that had another spiky ball thing going on but the spiky balls were smaller it had these prize packs where it said ninja surprise gamer surprise and we tried to get the unicorn surprise we weren't able to get it but we got the ninja surprise fast food surprise and a uh, gamer surprise so at this point like all the little kid screaming has stopped and the reason why it stopped is because I don't know if they did it or if their parents figured out how to do it but I just saw like all of these little kids running around with these ginormous spiky balls and I'm just sitting there like dang it I fed the machine for them <laughs> Like, I wanted a spiky ball, too, so I could bring it home to my dog. <laughs> so then Alex goes over, and then he, too, gets a spiky ball. And I'm, and it's, like, huge. We're having to cart this thing around with us. I can barely get my arms around it. He can barely get his arms around it. The thing is massive. So after we were satisfied with that, we go out into the car and we decide to open up all of these prize packs and see what was inside of them all. And in the Ninja Surprise, we got um, like a little Ninja bobblehead and actually a few like push him down. After a few seconds, he will pop up and hold jump in addition to it being a bobblehead. So that was actually kind of cool. Um, there was a puzzle thing in there to where you could like rotate all the pieces and stuff and like make different shapes for things. There was a squishable game controller. So like you could use it as a stress ball or a stem. And then there was a sticky hand. And then a bouncy ball. And all of our other prize packs had like kind of little kiddish um, stem kind of stuff in it. The fast food surprise I think had a jelly gummy candy hamburger and fries. And then a sticky hand. The, um, and then I got like these two little mystery ball things that I had to open up 
and they contained food items. So, um, one of them was coffee, and it was this little, like, nundroid kind of figure where, well, I guess not, like, necessarily a nundroid, but it was, like, a little nundroid-sized figure, I should say. So it's, like, little itty-bitty thing like this, and it was this character that was basically a coffee cup, and, like, coffee cup with um, feet, hands, eyes, face. It smelled like coffee and it was squishable. Oh, there goes my headphones. <laughs> Just like flying off of my desk. Because I am working with a limited amount of space. So I just shoved them off of my desk. Very random, but you know, whatever. In case you heard that. Um, I... So I got the coffee cup guy out of the mystery ball... Then there was another one where it was uh, popcorn and legit smelled like butter. <laughs> so, like, we went home with um, several things and I tried to get Riley to play with the big spiky ball, but she was actually kind of freaked out about it. Um... I guess because the size, because the smaller ones, she didn't have problems with those at all. She was, like, rolling them around and stuff and playing with them, having a good time. Um, so that was Andy B's. And Monday, I start my new shift. I'm, like... Right in the middle of my shift, I am feeling all of my allergy symptoms come back and everything, and I am just like, oh no. So, Monday, I reach out to my allergy doctor, and I'm saying, hey, these all came back. I don't know what I should do. Here's what I'm kind of doing to keep myself comfortable. Like, what do you suggest? And it was late in the day on Monday, so I'm just like, okay, you know, I'm probably not going to hear anything for a while. It is what it is. Tuesday, the uh, swelling and stuff had gotten uh, pretty bad, so I am just kind of like, eh, whatever. I just, I did eventually hear back, uh, yesterday and, oh, weather changed y'all. <laughs> if, um, you don't like the weather and Oklahoma during the springtime. Just wait five minutes. It's, I think it's storming. But anyways, um, I did eventually hear back like Tuesday from the allergy doctor that I have a new script and try it it's some more prednisone. will at least keep you comfortable up until Friday. You'll have a follow-up with us on, like, at 10.15 in the morning if you want to take it. And I'm just like, yes, absolutely, I will. So then I had to flip-flop that appointment with, like, better help because with all the stuff I have going on with allergies and, you know, bait, like, being a human, having your own struggles, dealing with things. I need all the help that I can get, to be honest. <laughs> You're not going to hear about me in the news anytime soon. Like, like I'm not that cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But, I mean, hey, with, with all of the allergies and things going on, it's, it is what it is. 
and I need to call in professionals because sometimes especially post pandemic it isn't necessarily the best care I know that my allergy office is inundated with people because allergies are just so much worse right now with all the wildfires over by Amarillo and um, with the other office closing down due to the whole scandal thing. It's just, yeah, like they are in desperate need. I feel like lately I haven't necessarily been getting the best care, but right away when I told them, um, all my symptoms had come back and I was following your instructions, they didn't take too long to get back to me. So I will definitely keep you guys posted on that. Um, Alex had just recently gotten his truck back. It still has some gremlins that we're trying to figure out. Like his truck rides and everything just fine. We took it last week to go get pizza and to have it actually finish its mission. He drove it to work yesterday and his gauge for gas was doing something pretty weird. Like, oh wow. Y'all, you can't even see me. Hang on just a second. Okay, that should be better. Like, now I'm actually in frame and everything. Um, but yeah, Alex's gas gauge was doing something super weird. Like, he'll be driving along and he'll see his gas go from, like, one half gradually to three quarters, which... He has a 30-minute commute across town. It's, you know, he would expect his gas to go down somewhat, especially after um, commuting multiple days in a row. But he only commuted once since we did everything with the transmission. And he saw his check engine light come on. And then there was, like, the gauge wasn't reading properly. The best way I could describe it is like, say for example, you know that you're going to burn 30 gallons of gas and you know that across town you're probably going to go from a full tank to like maybe just a hair beneath full day one. Day two, you're going to go from just a hair beneath full to, like, three quarters, you know. And, like, you can very readily, like, at regular intervals, see your gas decrease as the week goes on. But his gauge was making, like, really big swings by a quarter of a tank. Like, it would go from half to three quarters, and then it would go from three quarters back up to half. Like, it was just jumping around most bizarre thing that he has ever described with his truck thus far. So he obviously feels freaked out about that. He is, um, he is back driving the Ford Focus and it's just, yeah. We think that the gas cap may not be as effective as what it is supposed to be because the diagnostic code that his dad said was something to do with the vacuum sealed areas for 
the gas lines or for the gas. So we're thinking it is something to do with the fuel tank or like the cap. Which you would think that's a, you just got gas and you are so sleep deprived that you just forgot to put the cap onto your gas tank kind of error. It's something that probably everybody does every once in a while, you know. It's one of those like stupid silly errors. But he didn't do that. So it's like, like we fix one problem, like his brakes are feeling good in the truck, but now we just have this other thing. And it's kind of like a two steps forward, one step back situation. Kind of like the same thing with my allergies, but um, I have a feeling, y'all, that Friday I should probably be asking about quinazole because it's a, it's a medicated powder that you can use in your nasal area and it's supposed to activate the flushing of your and draining of your sinuses uh, more so than Nasonex and Flonase ever can. I know that people have seen fantastic results from it, so I am definitely going to pick people's brains about that. And we are still keeping Zolware in our back pocket as like a last resort. But I will keep you all posted about the allergy journey and all that and hopefully sooner rather than later I can return back to allergy shots. <sighs> it's just it's been one of those weeks y'all we're we're just barely making it to Thursday I haven't even worked yet and I am just like stick a fork in me I am done. It's not so much like I mean the hours are what they are. They're like not what I would prefer, but it's the type of calls that are coming in right now that are so drastically different that I'm just like, I feel jarred. Um, when I was on my old shift, I would get like the regular travel agents calling from the big companies. Like I know them, they know me. Look, the, they know how fast I can go on a call, uh, me with them. It's all good. We're moving and grooving. We're having a good time. And my calls will start out that way in the very beginning of my shift. Like my first two to three hours will be really good. And then we start getting into the later part of the day when everybody's getting off. So then I have the regular folk who just happen to have large families calling in and like doing their deposits or their final payments, you know, whatever, it's fine. As the day progresses, that's when I have like the, the folks who haven't booked yet, they will typically take more time to book their group reservations with me. It'll be like, it's just, it is what it is. Those calls take a little bit longer. But, you know, we're setting them up for success and everything. And the part that really jars me is what happens after those callers. Because typically when I'm like post lunch shift or post lunch on my shift is I will have a lot of calls that have like very... Um, weird energy to them. If you're a call center representative like me or like maybe you've done tech support or whatever in the past, I think you're going to understand what I'm talking about here in a second. 
like the energy with the calls just feel off or all over the place or there is a very push pull back and forth hurry up and wait dynamic I know it's like nothing that I should really pay any mind about or even get upset about, but it just, for a person handling the call, it just feels really um, kind of unsettling, I guess, or like you're being yanked all over is the best way I can describe it. Um, for example... I will get somebody who has a bunch of flight credit and they're trying to like hurry up the call, speed up the call because they know exactly what they want. Like they know the times, the flight numbers, how many days they're going to spend on vacation or whatever. And they just couldn't use their leftover tickets online and they have to call me to book it. And then it's like, we'll get to a certain point and then they realize, oh, there's like, I have to go get my credit card to finish up the other part of it. And I left it in the car because I got Starbucks earlier this afternoon and I forgot to bring it in. Or I have to go run upstairs to go get my card, run back down the stairs. And it's just, I all of a sudden went from moving a hundred miles an hour during this call to all of a sudden twiddling my thumbs. Or I would be just like reading a book because I have a lot of downtime in between my calls. And then all of a sudden I get the person who realizes, oh, this event is taking place or my work just flipped the script on me. I actually needed to have this be book yesterday. Um, <laughs> what can you do? It's not so much the fact that the calls are bad or anything, but it's just, it's that whole, you're rushing, you're rushing, you're rushing, and then you just like hit a brick wall in the call process and you are forced to stop. Um, and a lot with the group reservations, like everybody who is supposed to be on the reservation is there. The number of tickets is good. The prices are good. I go to run the credit card and then all of a sudden it declines because the person forgot to call their bank and let them know, hey, you're going to see a lot of purchases from blah, blah, blah airline because we are doing group reservations. <laughs> um, or they fail to realize, oh, it's like my bank will only allow me to spend $2,500 daily with them unless me and them have a conversation. And I just have to sit there and bite my tongue because these people are spending $15,000, $25,000 with me and um, I'm there to help them. <laughs> it's like two steps forward, one step back or back and forth and back and forth. And I'm just like, oh, stick a fork in me, I am done. And that just um, doesn't, and that's just like the business as usual on Monday and Tuesday, like yesterday, today, I know I'm going to have a lot of downtime between calls. They're not going to give us early release or anything like that because there's severe weather happening in Kansas. Well, it happened in Kansas yesterday. Um there's severe weather that could potentially happen just to the east of us over by Fort Sill. Um, hoping that everybody is staying safe, y'all. Uh, severe weather can be a beast. But yeah, I know like there's, there's going to be pockets of downtime in between calls. And then all of a sudden I'm going to get that panicked person who is coming in like a wrecking ball because their flight just got canceled due to the weather or 
something along those lines. Like, I already know it's going to happen. Like, I've seen the rather reports. I am totally prepared for it. It just, it is what it is. It's that lovely dance we do with Mother Nature, especially during spring break. And that's also why they're not letting us out early or, like, go to work on special projects or anything like that. They all want us. They would much rather have us, like, reading comic books or, um, or whatever, waiting for those calls to come in and then just, like, pouncing like a tiger on those calls. But it's just, you know, it's just very, like, difficult energy, difficult vibes to have to deal with. I think probably my most aggravating so far has been, like, if people give me names and the names look all beautiful and pristine on the surface, but then when I go to process them and add their, um, frequent flyers or their known travelers to their tickets, and then that prevents me from actually getting their reservation paid for, oh, those are the worst. I must have spent an hour 44 minutes on one of those yesterday. And even then, I had to eventually take my lunch, come back, and still proceed to work on this reservation for another 45 minutes after. Thankfully, it was me who could handle that because we did not have any calls waiting. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, it's just, yeah. Call center life. What can I do? All I can really do is, you know, just keep showing up, making videos whenever I can, and, you know, try not to push myself too much. Sometimes I feel like... Sometimes I feel like everything that I'm just going through right now is just, like, so hard to deal with. And it just feels so hopeless. But I know I need to just, like, not push myself and then just, like, take joy in the stolen moments of peace that I do get throughout my day. Like, even though this is take two of the video... I feel pretty happy with this right now, and I am going to be super happy when I get to edit it and put it up. I feel like I've learned a lot lately with audio. I've made investments and stuff in getting a wireless microphone system in case y'all are wondering why my previous videos sound different than what they do now. Um, that's why I'm actually using the Rode Wireless Me, um, in case y'all wanted to know. But, yeah, it's just, um, I mean, I don't want to, I don't necessarily want to, like, drag you guys down with all my stuff, and yet I feel like I need to share to a certain extent because otherwise I'm just not being authentic. And if money was not an option, I would be doing, like, art all day or um, do diamond painting stuff all day. But, you know, it's not what pays the bills. And I just, unfortunately, have to put up with that weird, um, like, dynamic type of calls for the season. I have a feeling that once I get past the first two weeks of April, my calls are going to be so much better and it's just going to be business as usual. Everybody is just panicking because the weather is going to impact their 
spring break plans that they've worked so hard to put together. I feel like if I keep going, the, like, I'm just going to be a blubbering, umming mess, even more so than I already am, and uh, the lighting and the weather is, like, completely changing because we are going to get a little something-something over here in Oklahoma City, not tornadoes, thank goodness, but I did see the weather just completely take a 180, and I'm losing my light. So I'm going to stick a pin in it. Um, please uh, keep those who are in the affected areas for the weather in your thoughts and in your minds. Uh, we hope that everybody stays safe and... Please keep me in your thoughts, too, as I continue on with these allergy struggles. I will talk at y'all later. Bye!